Hey everybody, Karen Bryan here, and today kicking back with me, I have got one half of the main event, Jarzinho Rosenstreich with me. Biggie, look it, I'm ready for this interview, baby. I got my Biggie shirt on. I love this. Thank you so much for giving it to me. How are you? Good, and you? I'm great. I'm great. Well, I'm happy that you had the time uh, to talk with me today. Big deal. Main event for you. Um, this was supposed to be in Saudi Arabia, though, and I was so excited to go there. So how do you feel about the fact that you're fighting in Vegas instead? I had the same feeling that I want to go to Saudi Arabia for my first time, um, but not to change a lot. I used to fight in Vegas, so it's fine with me. Not so it's a long flight, just four or five hours, and we'll be in Vegas, so it's okay with me. Yeah, but the the bummer, I guess, is not having the crowd, right? That's correct. But it's something that needs to be settled. It's been a while that I've been in the octagon. Yeah. So that's good with me. Let's settle this and then we go for the crowd, the other one. Nice. Uh, and I have to apologize, folks. Oh, there it goes. My cuckoo clock. I'm sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> All the time you interview, we got that. I know, right? So, so yeah, the, there is the benefit too, though, about the apex. And like you just said, you're trying to get back on the horse here. It's been a minute since you fought. So maybe there's something nice about the apex being a little bit more intimate and, and feeling more like home, right? Since you have fought there so many times. All right. I've uh, been in the apex for a few times. And yeah. Um, yeah, I can't wait, actually. Not too much to say about it. I just can't wait. It's it's a big opportunity again. It's a main event, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling good. It looks good. And, and, and I'm ready to go. Nice. Okay, so you're fighting Gadziev, who is, um, you know, came in and beat Budai. He is young and hungry, and you've got some quality wins on your record. So obviously, he knows that getting a win over you would mean a lot. When you look at him and his fight game, what do you think you have to worry about the most? I definitely think he brings a lot to the table. Uh, he has a perfect record. A um, guy like that also always uh, always be uh, um, comfortable. Uh, have the feeling is. Uh, What's the word? I can't find the word. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, I can't find the word. Right well, now. when the other person is undefeated, you mean? Like, yeah. Like you have the joy of taking their their uh, their O. <laughs> not not only that, but the way he's feeling. So he's gonna gotcha. be comfortable coming forward, do what he does. Um, for me, if I look at him, look at his fight, he like to bully fighters to come forward, put pressure, you know, uh, go for the takedown or go uh, come with a lot of punches. So. It's not that I have to worry about a lot. It's 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 the fight the, and the fight game is like I want to stop him. So whatever he comes with, I have to adapt to that. And then uh, I'm ready. I feel good. I'm in shape. And yeah, I think what you're what you're talking about is that feeling like when when people are undefeated, they're they feel invincible. They just keep you know, they, they feel like they're always going to keep winning and stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, they come at you with a certain amount of confidence. And when people confidence, that's it, yes, yes. confidence. Right. So he's going to come forward. And I like I've been there before. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And th the other side of the, uh, uh, of the money is like give him his first loss will be. Uh, big disappointed for him yeah. and I'm going in there and I want to win no matter what nice well and when people do come forward to though that that's great right like it gives you a lot of opportunity to work if somebody is coming at you right I mean obviously it gives you um the, the counter opportunities but there's something about that too right when they're coming at you constantly at least you know somebody's bringing you the fight and you don't have to chase them down correct that, 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 yeah like it's the fight game. There's a lot of opportunity, and probably he's gonna hear this interview and he's gonna take that, and then he's gonna work on it. So we all do that, you know. Yeah. So um, I've been here for a minute now, and I learn a lot um, going forward. I keep learning. I'm in this process right now. I feel like I make a couple of mistakes in the beginning of my UFC career, but right now I'm busy with this journey, and I'm already feeling really good. And, and yeah, I can't wait after this fight. So for win this fight, take a couple of steps back, reconnect, recalibrate back with Suriname. And then I'll show you guys something else. And I'm already in a good process. So nice. Yeah. Well, you you seem like you're in a good space. And I want to I want to ask you about a couple of things you just said there. Right. So you came out. You came out the gate in the UFC and you got some really high quality wins and you got some really high profile opportunities. Oh, yeah. 
so what do you think the mistakes were that you made? Because, you know, yeah, you have won some and you've lost some. So what do you think the mistakes have been? So for me, I think um, my UFC career, it went right away like this, like mm -hmm. sky high. Uh, I didn't got the opportunity to to uh, build my, my ground game against a fighter that's my level of ground game. So it was like a striker against a wrestler. So you fighting the high, the, I was fighting the, the high level striker and also wrestler and I was beating them, but I didn't got the opportunity to develop, to develop my game. So it's like trying to develop, fight right away. You know, if it doesn't go your way, you go back home, you keep developing, 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 but it's not, it's not, it's never enough and you don't have the time. So everything went so fast. And um, I'm at this point that I, I feel like I, I learn a lot and, and, and a lot of things goes my way and a lot of not. So right now I'm in a good space. I'm in this journey and I'm, and I'm I think I'm going to make it right. I think I'm, I'm in a good space to make it right. That's, that's, you're saying everything everybody I would imagine wants to hear because I feel like that's the one thing that people would take away from you is like, well, all you gotta do is put Biggie down. And yeah. then he's not going to know anything, you know? And so it was, it was a hole in your game. So now that you've had this time that I would imagine is that's what you've mostly been working on. <laughs> Definitely. It, it, it's yeah. been hard, like all these years working on your wrestling game, trying to take somebody down or someone take you down and trying to get up. It's hard. But at the same time, um, I'm embracing it. And then and, and it, it's coming around little by little. So... Good. Well, listen, even the best wrestlers, even, you know, DC, everybody, they would always say like, even they hated going to wrestling practice half oh, the yeah. time. It's the worst, isn't it? It is the worst, but at the same time, when you know enough, yeah. you can you can be offensive, for an example. Mm -hmm. You know, even you're fighting against a wrestler, you threaten him to bring him down. So, and wrestlers don't like to go into energy to get taken down, to defend and get you taken down. So it's always it's always a, a struggle. When two wrestlers fighting, you never see they go to the ground. Right. It'd be a, it'd be a boxing match or a kickboxing match. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's what you bring to the table to win a fight and what you need to win a fight. But you gotta know it, even if you don't, don't use it you know, at the time. Right, right. Yeah, so who have you been working with then in terms of uh, getting ready, ready for all this wrestling? Uh, I've been working with uh, King Mo for the last, yes five five years yeah. um all the fighters in the gym um from from junior to an uh, olovsky pesan name it everybody's there Bushesha, marcelo we have a lot of good names big guys big wrestlers um also the class with steve marco that, that gives a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities so you can learn so i've been working with all of them and, and it feels good uh, it's coming along Nice. Well, and that's, a, yeah, that's quite the squad. You know, Junior obviously is fighting uh, bare knuckle. Is that something you would ever yeah. do? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. fighting the same thing as I do. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, because I was just thinking about that. Like, obviously, Junior doesn't have to worry about any wrestling. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you do that. Like, I get nervous when I see people that I like uh, bare knuckle boxing. But um, but I could actually see it as something that like a lot of people can find a lot of success in. So yeah, bare knuckle, I think bare knuckle is, is, is one of the most brutal sport right now. Yeah, you know you don't have any gloves on, so it's it's it's, it's a matter of connecting. It's, it's when, who connect first, you'll be gone. That's it. Yeah. So you always got to be first, and I definitely think it's 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 it's, it's something weird and good to do <laughs> after my UFC career. Not now, Not right now, <laughs> my UFC career. Um, Go in there, beat Chandler Gazif, and and get back, you know, on the horse and feels good. Nice. So when we when we talk about that, and I, and is uh, whose little baby is that? I can hear a cute little. It sounds like oh, a cute little son. kid. Yeah, it's my son. He's on his oh. chilling and, and trying so, to stay. So sick. cute. How many kids do you have now? I have in total twenty kids. What? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I have a couple. Like, uh, I have three boys. Yeah. Okay. Cause three, three girls. Three, three boys and three girls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good squad. It is. <laughs> You're not Cowboy Oliveira yet, but you've got Rob Whitaker beat. So I think he's got five kids. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, nice. So you mentioned too, um, uh, talking about getting back in there and you know, like reaffirming your place and stuff. So yeah, what do you make of the division right now? Tom Aspinall, certainly a big star on the rise. There's a lot of quality talent, but you know, John Jones still kind of looms over everything, even though we don't really know what's going on with him exactly. So what do you, what do you make of the state of the division these days? Uh, the, I think the division is kind of unstable, but it's, it's, it's always like that since I've been in the UFC. Uh, the heavyweight division is always all over the place. Yeah. Mm, but I think it comes because we are big guys. You get injured a lot. Uh, a lot of things happen. You don't, you don't, uh, how should I say it? It's not you don't you don't be aware of it when it's gonna happen, but when it happens, then you, you're gonna be out for a while. Yeah. And sad to hear that the champion is, is injured. And then Don Espinal come in, which was a good one. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it, it's always all over the place, so you can't say nothing about it. It is what it is. Yeah. And for me, it's like focus on what's what is from front of me, and then uh, and then we climb the ladder. Well, as we know, and you mentioned him, one of your teammates, Andre Arlovsky, at least with the heavyweight division, I think collectively you guys have the oldest average age. You can keep going because, That's you know, cool. all it takes is one punch sometimes to change everything. And we've seen Andre is still very agile and he's still in there hanging with really young guys. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, he's very athletic. Uh, mm -hmm. Even his age is that high. He's, uh, he keeps doing his thing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, and so are you, you said you'll go back to Suriname after the fight? Yeah, I go back to Suriname, stay there, I think, two months, yes. um, recalibrate, recharge, get myself together, feels good, feel good, and then uh, come back for for, uh, for revenge. Nice. I would I would imagine, I'm just trying to imagine you and, like, the whole Biggie family traveling to the airport and traveling to Suriname. Oh, like, we all must... to the airport. Jeez, it's not easy. I got to focus. I can imagine, especially on the Suriname side, trying to come back. I bet it's probably wild. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, um, this is exciting. I'm happy to have you back in business. As you mentioned, it has been a minute. Um, so, yeah, if there is there any any of your fights in the past that you would like to recreate? I know, um, you know, you you had that amazing knockout of Overeem at the end. But uh, is there any of the fights that you've had so far where you're like, man, if I could make it go like that one, I'd be happy? Um, yeah, I think maybe the Curtis Blade fight. Yeah. That was the one that I was like, ah, I missed him. Yeah. It was almost there. But yeah. that, that's the only one. And then, and yeah, the rest, it is what it is. And if we have to run it back, I'm more than happy to do it. Nice. Cool, yeah. cool. Well, I'm excited to see you. As we said, you are the main event um, against uh, Gadziev on March 2nd. That is at the Apex. So, Biggie, thank you so much for uh, kicking back with me. And again, thanks so much for this shirt. I love it. I had to break it out today. Oh, my pleasure. Um, happy you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to work your fight. Uh, it's going to be a good one. So thank you so much for your time today, and I'll see you in Vegas. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, I see you in Vegas. Yes. Yeah. I'll see I you see. soon.